Hey everyone, uh, so I've done a couple of videos now where I uh, play music by Lorne and um, people have asked me how I get the sounds so I'm going to share that with you. Um, for those who have an AxeFX or AxeFX2, uh, I'm just going to share the presets and I'll show you how they're made and uh, broadly speaking I think actually um, this kind of music might be easier to imitate with analog instruments than with synthesizers. I don't know very much about electronic production, so I could be wrong. <laughs> but uh, I think one of the things that makes Lauren's music so appealing is that it sounds, it, it really um, narrowly strides between the two camps of being um, digital and analog, right? So you've got all those analog delays and reverbs, everything sounds like it's, it inhabits a real space. But on the other hand, obviously, you know, it's not played on real instruments. So, you know, it's not like there's a, a guy with a trombone out there that Lauren has locked in a basement and he's making all the cool brass sounds. Although you never know, it could be <laughs> it could be quite dark. Um, so yeah, so the general thing I'm doing technique wise is I'm starting the note uh, with the pick. If I want it to be really loud or more commonly actually for this with just the left hand by itself. And that ha helps eliminate the pick attack which is really useful when you're trying to blend in with synthesizers. Um, and then the volume knob is starting at zero. And then I'm bringing it up. So what I'm trying to do generally here is imitate Lauren's attack and sustain. Um, there's another thing that's really cool that I'm kind of getting reasonably close to, which is a lot of his notes kind of come in quite clean and then there's a bit of dirt as they as they hit their zenith. Um, and I'm doing that guitaristically by having an overdrive pedal and an amplifier with a bit of gain on it. So um, if you're a guitar player you know this, maybe if you're an electronics guy you don't, but when you um, pump a, more volume into a guitar amplifier they distort uh, and that's that's one of the wonderful things about this so by getting this kind of organic increase in distortion as I increase the volume that really helps me imitate the sound um, the only exciting part of the signal chain really so this is compressor volume overdrive amplifier and finally reverb the reverb is the only interesting thing so I've got four seconds of reverb so I guess it's quite a lot um, <laughs> and uh, it, I've got it set to be 86.6% of the mix. So I didn't actually, um, the extra half a percent is, <laughs> is not too important. Um, and I've kind of dialed this in by ear is what I'm comfortable with, with, with my, uh, my knob technique. Um, and it gets me close enough to the sound that I'm quite happy with it. It feels responsive to touch. Um, a lot of getting close to the sound is being really attentive in terms of um, uh, the attack of the notes, like how strongly and quickly they come in, um, how much distortion there ends up being at max volume, um, and obviously how you sustain the note and if you add vibrato or a subtle bend or anything like that. So I think ironically, although I'm kind of showing you this on an expensive guitar, expensive amplifier, um, it's mostly in the hands, really. Um, I think if you had, if you kind of, practice this kind of thing and then just switch it over to a much cheaper setup and get very close to it. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll share the presets so you can, if you have the equipment, you can just start. Um, and now I'm going to show you a couple of the signs that are a little bit more <laughs> um, ambitious and use interesting things about the axe effects. Uh, so for example, um, for uh, 555, 5555, five, 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 um, Right, um, I'm playing a full chord, and I could probably hammer it on with this hand and do the volume knob thing, but instead what I've got done is uh, use this to automatically fade in each note for me. You can see it's not exactly perfect, but I have it set to modify the volume based on the envelope of the uh, incoming input signal. So whenever I um, start a note, that um, 
it's basically an automatic volume knob triggered by the volume of the incoming note. Um, similarly, um, the main kind of big synth sound, and it sounds horrible, actually, uh, I need to retune my guitar. So that sounds uh, a bit like this. <laughs> So what I've done there is I've got a pitch block here, harmonizing up an octave and up two octaves. And the mix is controlled by the pitch of the incoming notes. So when I start with the bass, when I start the lowest note, um, there's no uh, harmony octaves that are playing. But as I slowly move up that line, and that's to try and capture the octave doubling that Lauren's doing. I could probably record a separate guitar tracks and that kind of thing, but I felt it was more organic to just kind of go straight ahead with all of them. And then uh, one of the parts in the chorus of um, Until There Is No End, I used a rotary speaker effect. Um, so what are these? The Hammond organs, I think, have these uh, speakers which I think they spun or something? I don't know. I think they literally rotated. Um, and that gives me this kind of... And I add lots of vibrato. Oh, it's a bit better. Um, and that's how I'm getting that chorus sound. So uh, I would say, in general, um, the, you can actually get really close using mostly your hands, right? It's not, it's not really about fancy effects if you want to get close to this sound. A reverb pedal, yeah, you probably need one of those. Uh, apart from that, it's it's all about paying attention, um, doing a really good job of uh, listening to each note and the characteristics that make it um, beautiful, right? And then trying to imitate that on your instrument. Um, I've learned a lot by doing this. I've had a lot of fun. That's the main reason I'm doing it. I'm not making any money off this. Um, and I encourage you, whatever music you love, try and imitate it on whichever instruments you play. Um, and it's um, it's really good fun, and you'll probably learn something. Um, thank you.